listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with Master Storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 26. We are beginning the book of Job. I'll be giving a more detailed introduction in just a moment. And in the New Testament, we are continuing in the book of Matthew. Jesus gives a story about forgiveness and basically teaches us to pay it forward. If you've never heard that term before, just stay with us to hear all the details. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. The Book of Job, an introduction. Why do bad things happen? Why does God allow good people to suffer? Why is there evil in the world? These questions always cause discussion because everyone has some experience with suffering. We have all seen bad things happen to good people. Sometimes it seems as if God is not fair. The book of Job is about a good man who suffered. But when Job asked God why he suffered, he did not get the answer he expected. The book of Job is a beautiful work of literature with both stories and poems. The introduction and conclusion of the book are told as stories. But the middle section is poetry that describes conversations between Job and his friends, Job and a young man, and finally, Job and God. The story of Job is one of the few stories in the Old Testament that involves a character called Satan. Most people know the word Satan as the name of the Prince of Evil, and this is true for much of Scripture. But in Job, Satan is a title and description of what this angel-like being does. Many people see him as an accuser, like a lawyer who argues against people. But in the book of Job, Satan is a violent attacker. He does not accuse Job of anything. Instead, he kills Job's family and tortures him. This Satan walks the earth looking for people to attack. When God gives this violent being permission to test Job, God has to instruct him to spare Job's life. The book of Job begins by asking why evil and suffering are in the world, but no answer is given. Instead, God changes the question. The question for Job, and now for us, becomes, how will I deal with evil in the world? How does Job deal with his suffering? Does he stop trusting God? Does he despair and give up? When you read this book, you will see how Job finally responds to suffering. Perhaps you will see Job as an example of how to deal with difficult times in your life. When you ask God, why? Are you asking the right question? In the book of Job, a good man is tortured by Satan, then argues with his friends and questions God, then listens to a young man, then listens to God and humbly responds, and finally he is given more than he had before. Job chapter 1. Job, the good man. There was a man named Job who lived in the country of Uz. He was a good, honest man. He respected God and refused to do evil. Job had seven sons and three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 1,000 oxen, and 500 female donkeys. He had many servants. He was the richest man in the east. Job's sons took turns having dinner parties in their homes, and they invited their sisters. The day after each of these parties, Job got up early in the morning, sent for his children, and offered a burnt offering for each of them. And he thought, Maybe my children were careless and sinned against God at their party. Job always did this so that his children would be forgiven for their sins. Then the day came for the heavenly beings to meet with the Lord. Even Satan was there with them. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you been? Satan answered the Lord, I have been roaming around the earth, 
going from place to place. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is a good, faithful man. He respects God and refuses to do evil. Satan answered the Lord, But Job has a good reason to respect you. You always protect him, his family, and everything he has. You blessed him and made him successful in everything he does. He is so wealthy that his herds and flocks have filled the land. But if you were to destroy everything he has, I promise you that he would curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, all right, do whatever you want with anything that he has, but don't hurt Job himself. Then Satan left the meeting. One day, Job's sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house. A messenger came to Job and said, <laughs> We were plowing the fields with the oxen. And the donkeys were eating grass nearby and when some Sibians attacked us and took your animals. They, they killed the other servants. I am the only one who escaped to come and tell you the news. That messenger was still speaking when another one came in and said, A um, bolt of lightning struck your sheep and servants and burned them up. I am the only one who escaped to come and tell you the news. That messenger was still speaking when another one came in and said, The Chaldeans sent out three raiding parties that attacked us and took the camels. They killed the other servants. I am the only one who escaped to come and tell you the news. That messenger was still speaking when another one came in and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house. A strong wind suddenly came in from across the desert and blew the house down. It fell on your sons and daughters and they are all dead. I'm the only one who escaped to come and tell you the news. Job heard this. He got up, tore his clothes, and shaved his head to show his sorrow. Then he fell to the ground to bow down before God and said, When I was born into this world, I was naked and had nothing. When I die and leave this world, I will be naked and have nothing. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Praise the name of the Lord. Even after all this, Job did not sin. He did not accuse God of doing anything wrong. Job chapter 2. Then another day came for the heavenly beings to meet with the Lord. Satan joined them for this meeting with the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you been? Satan answered the Lord, I have been roaming around the earth, going from place to place. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is a good, faithful man. He respects God and refuses to do evil. He is still faithful, even though you asked me to let you destroy him for no reason. Satan answered, Skin for skin, a man will give everything he has to protect himself. I swear, if you attack his flesh and bones, he will curse you to your face. So the Lord said to Satan, All right, Job is in your hands, but you are not allowed to kill him. So Satan left the meeting with the Lord and attacked Job. 
He gave Job painful sores all over his body, from the soles of his feet to the top of his head. Job went and sat on a pile of rubbish to show his sorrow. He used a piece of broken pottery to scrape his sores. His wife said to him, Isn't it time to stop trying to be faithful? Just curse God and die. Job answered, You sound like one of those fools on the street corner. How can we accept all the good things that God gives us and not accept the problems? So even after all that happened to Job, he did not sin. He did not accuse God of doing anything wrong. Three of Job's friends heard about the bad things that happened to him. They were Eliphaz from Taman, Bildad from Shaua, and Zophar from Nema. They met together and decided to visit Job and comfort him. But his friends didn't even recognize him when they first saw him in the distance. They began to cry loudly. They tore their clothes and threw dirt in the air over their heads to show their sorrow. Then they sat on the ground with Job for seven days and seven nights. They didn't say a word because they saw he was in so much pain. Job chapter 3. Then Job opened his mouth and cursed the day he was born. He said, I wish the day I was born would be lost forever. I wish the night they said, it's a boy, had never happened. I wish that day had remained dark. I wish God above had forgotten it and had never let the sun come up that day. I wish that bitter day had remained as dark as death, covered with the darkest clouds, terrified when the sun disappeared. I wish the darkness had carried away that night, that it was left off the calendar and not included in any of the months. I wish that night had produced nothing and no happy shouts had been heard. Some magicians think they can wake Leviathan? So let them say their curses and curse the day I was born. Let that day's morning star be dark. Let that night wait for a morning that never comes. I wish it had never seen the first rays of sunlight. I wish it had stopped me from being born and kept me from seeing all these troubles. Why didn't I die when I was born? Why didn't I die as I came from my mother's womb? Why did my mother hold me on her knees? Why did her breasts feed me? If I had died when I was born, I would be at peace now. I wish I were asleep and at rest with the kings and their advisors who built palaces that are now in ruins. I wish I were buried with rulers who filled their graves with gold and silver. Why wasn't I a child who died at birth and was put in the ground? I wish I had been buried like a baby who never saw the light of day. There the wicked stop causing trouble and the weary find rest. Even prisoners find relief there. They no longer hear their guards shouting at them. Everyone from the greatest to the least important will be there. And even the slave is free from his master. Why must a suffering person continue to live? Why let anyone live such a bitter life? Such people want to die, but death does not come. They search for death more than for hidden treasure. They would be happy to find their grave. They would rejoice to find their tomb. But God keeps their future a secret and builds a wall around them to protect them. When it is time to eat, all I can do is sigh with sadness, not joy. My groans pour out like water. I was afraid something terrible would happen, and what I feared most has happened. I cannot calm down or relax. 
I am too upset to rest. Matthew chapter 18, verses 10 through 35. Jesus is speaking to his followers. Be careful. Don't think these little children are not important. I tell you that these children have angels in heaven, and those angels are always with my Father in heaven. If a man has 100 sheep, but one of the sheep is lost, what will he do? He will leave the other 99 sheep on the hill and go to look for the lost sheep. And if he finds the lost sheep, he is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 sheep that were never lost. I can assure you, in the same way, your Father in heaven does not want any of these little children to be lost. If one of your brothers or sisters in God's family does wrong to you, Go and tell them what they did wrong. Do this when the two of you are alone. If that person listens to you, then you have helped them to be a true brother or sister again. But if that person refuses to listen, go to them again and take one or two other believers with you. Then there will be two or three witnesses to prove the truth of everything you say. If the person whose sin refuses to listen to them, then tell the church. And if they refuse to listen to the church, treat them as you would treat an unbeliever or a tax collector. I can assure you that when you speak judgment here on earth, it will be God's judgment. And when you promise forgiveness here on earth, it will be God's forgiveness. To say it another way, if two of you on earth agree on anything you pray for, my Father in heaven will do what you ask. Yes, if two or three people are together, believing in me, I am there with them. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, when someone won't stop doing wrong to me, how many times must I forgive them? Seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, you must forgive them more than seven times. You must continue to forgive them even if they do wrong to you 77 times. I say this because God's kingdom is like a king who decided to collect the money his servants owed him. The king began to collect his money. One servant owed him more than 300 tons of silver. He did not have enough money to pay this debt. So the king ordered that servant and everything he owned to be sold, even his wife and children. But the servant fell on his knees and begged, be patient with me. I will pay you everything I owe. The king felt sorry for him, so he let the servant go free and told him he did not have to pay. Later, that same servant found another servant who owed him 100 silver coins. He grabbed him around the neck and said, Pay me the money you owe me. The other servant fell on his knees and begged him, Be patient with me. I will pay you everything I owe. But the first servant refused to be patient. He told the judge that the other servant owed him money and that servant was put in jail until he could pay everything he owed. When the other servant saw what happened, he felt sorry for the man in jail. So they went and told the king everything that had happened. Then the king called the first servant in and said, You evil servant! You begged me to forgive your debt, and I let you go without paying anything. So you should have given that other man who serves with you the same mercy I gave you. The king was very angry, so he put the servant in jail to be punished till he could pay everything he owed. This king did the same as my heavenly father will do to you. You must forgive your brother or sister with all your heart or my heavenly father will not forgive you psalm chapter 16 a mictum of david protect me god because i depend on you some of you have said to the lord you are my lord every good thing i have comes from you 
do you have also said about the gods of this land? They are my powerful gods. They are the ones who make me happy. But those who worship other gods will have many troubles. I will not join them in pouring out blood as offering to idols. I will not even say their names. Lord, you give me all I need. You support me. You give me my share. My share is wonderful. My inheritance is beautiful. I praise the Lord because he taught me well. Even at night, he put his instructions deep inside my mind. I never forget that the Lord is with me. He is right here beside me, so nothing can harm me. That is why I feel so happy. I am filled with joy. Even this weak body of mine is safe because you, Lord, will not leave me in the grave. You will not let your faithful servant rot there. You will show me the way that leads to life. Being together with you will fill me with joy. Sitting beside you, I will never stop celebrating. Thank you, everyone. That was day 26. Join us for day 27. Job faces his friend Eliphaz and argues with God, saying that he's a good man and that none of this should have ever happened to him. And in the book of Matthew, Jesus gives an important lesson on divorce. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.